Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Jake here and uh, here's a video on how to make Asian stock. All right, we're just going to get some bones out here. These are bones that I've saved over the course of the last three months. These are wing tips from wing nights. I do buy the wings whole and then cut off the tips and stick them in the freezer for future use. Uh, the other bag here I have is an entire carcass uh, that I had purchased at the grocery store. I was around $2 for the, car for the carcass, as well as the head and the feet of a bird that I had roasted previously. It's going to get my stock pot here uh, filled with water going so it's nice and hot or warm when I put the bones in. This is the pot that I'll be boiling the bones in to rid it of some of that, uh, some of its uh, impurities. Um, we are not gonna thaw these out because I just don't have that time. So I'm just gonna throw these frozen, all of it into the boiling water um, so we can uh, purify them essentially in the boiling water. And then once they've been quote unquote purified or boiled for about five or 10 minutes, uh, we're going to throw them into the big pot um, to begin the rendering of the gelatin. This is an entire car carcass that I'd purchased uh, from the grocery store for around $2. I did also throw in there some feet and an entire uh, neck and head of a roasted bird that I did a few weeks back. Um, that way we can optimize on the flavor, the chicken flavor in the stock. And this is a back that I'd cut out also from a roasted chicken previously. Now you'll notice I'll be throwing the wing tips directly into the um, stock pot. And that's because there's not a whole lot of impurities to render from those. There might be a little bit, but I'm willing to skim that. I'm just gonna prepare aromatics, uh, some yellow onions. I am gonna cut off all the skin and fuzzies because the skin can lend some color to the stock, which I don't want uh, too much of. Um, the fuzzies, just cut them off because why have them in there? Since we're throwing out the uh, skins of the onions. We're also going to be uh, adding some celery and some carrots to the mix as well. Um, unlike a traditional French stock, it is lighter on the aromatics and uh, more pronounced with the uh, chicken flavor. Um, the chicken bones are actually typically boiled a little bit longer than they would in French um, stock making. Um, and it also has considerably less aromatic vegetables uh, trying to double down on the chicken flavor. Also, don't mind my daughter there in the background. She's always with me uh, when she's not at school. Now, you'll notice when I lift up that onion, there's a little bit of a rotted core in there. I absolutely hate when that happens, and, you know, it's gross to keep it in there, so I am going to just pull that out. The rest of the onion is just fine. You can take a look for yourself inside whenever this happens. Smell it if you want to, you know... Um, I'm not into wasting very much, so I'm going to just remove that and the remainder of it, which is free of any um, moldy parts or any uh, nasty bits, um, is fine to go inside of the pot. So the rest will go into the stock pot to uh, lend its aromatic flavor. And as you can hear in the background there, my daughter's full of pizza, so. <laughs> okay, and here's our aromatics. We've got our carrots and our celery. We also got a few bay leaves there. Uh, standard, these are all standard ingredients that I put into my stocks, whether it's um, French or uh, Asian. Sometimes I leave the um, carrots out of the Asian stocks. Um, I like to try to make them as clear as possible, not so yellow in color or anything to that effect. Uh, but we're just going to give the aromatics a quick wash uh, and a little bit of a pat dry, although I'm not too sure exactly why I would do that since it's going into a stock pot. And uh, everything into the pool. And now we have the uh, pot that we're going to be boiling the rest of the bones in ready to go. Uh, we're going to go in first with the chicken back and then in with the entire carcass. Again, we're not thawing this out probably could uh, I don't have that time so in goes the pool and we're gonna boil that until everything is foamy and gross um, we're going to uh, do a quick maneuver to try to get all get rid of all of the impurities on the surface of the bones and then flop them directly into the stock pot that's a quick setup 
of how I get things done quick and easy uh, when I'm making these stocks. So as you can see, it's uh, starting to um, thaw out and boil. It's going to set a timer. About 20 minutes or so, I think. I'm not too sure. I can't remember. 15, 20 minutes will be just fine in the other application. Um, as you can see, the foam is starting to, to uh, rise. Those are the impurities from the bones uh, that we want to lift off. Just some extra proteins uh, that would... Um, make the uh, stock um, cloudy and the skimming the necessary skimming when you're making the stock even though we've taken all these extra steps to try to uh, clarify the stock you know you can't get away from skimming um, it's just standard treatment for a stock uh, you know you want to try to give your best effort in clarifying it so try to be diligent in skimming when you're making your stocks at home. I am also going to be skimming the pot that we're boiling our bones in only because I'm going straight directly from this pot into the stock pot. And I don't want to have to compete with a ton of, of this uh, grime and um, all that nasty stuff. Okay, we're about ready. So here's my little maneuver. Just a quick dunk or two to try to shake off the impurities and go straight into the stock pot. Um, should I rinse these in the sink? Yeah, probably. Um, and if I were to tell you guys the proper technique, I would say to rinse them. But again, I don't have that time. I'm feeling a little bit lazy. So uh, please excuse my laziness here. And um, let me show you a technique that works uh, that you can use instead of rinsing. Um, but again, I am still going to be skimming the stock pot. So I'm still putting in my due diligence to try to clarify this stock as much as possible. I'm just not taking the extra step to take that small pot over to the sink, drain it, and wash all the bones. But I am going to put in my effort to try to clarify the uh, final stock pot. As you can see, this continues to boil and there's going to be even more impurities that come to the surface. There's a shot, a final shot of uh, the stock while we start its journey <laughs> into reducing and gathering flavor from its constituents. And we're about ready to let it go overnight. And in a moment, you'll see the switch and here we are 24 hours later. You'll see that the stock has reduced um, by a bit. Uh, we're gonna keep letting it go, uh, but this is what uh, it looked like when I woke up the next morning. I did leave it on the stove overnight on maybe a two and a half uh, to let it slowly um, bubble and reduce. Over that time, you'll see that um, the vegetables have wilted, uh, releasing their flavor. The stock is still clear, as you can see. And what we're really trying to achieve is like a clarity and like a, a whiteness of it. We don't want very much color, which is why we took the skins off of the onion. If I had let that on, left the skins on the onion, it would be a lot more yellow in color, a lot more golden. So now we're going to get on with the straining of the stock. Now, mind you, we did hit that 24 hour mark, so this is a little bit later on in the day. I am going to strain out a little bit into a bit of a clear um, bowl here so that you can see exactly what we're dealing with and what this looks like, how light in color it is and how clear it is. Um, I've lined a chinois with another um, strainer to try to mimic using a cheesecloth. And as you can see, it's pretty clear in color. There you go. Nice, clear Asian stock. If you buy one of those stock cans from a Chinese grocery store, it'll look exactly like this with a little bit of uh, oil in there um, from the bones. Um, but that's essentially it. Here we go, straining it into a stock uh, container. Um, this is what I use to put into the fridge when I make stock. Um, and I'll just pour out of this every time I need to use it. 
Again, we're going to use the double strainer method. <laughs> if I was working in a restaurant, I'd probably strain this with a cheesecloth to make sure that we get all the little bits. But at home, I'm not going to be too picky about it. Um, these are all going to be used to make uh, soups or stews or sauces. So, uh, you know, my kids don't need that extra step in straining it. But as you can see, it's quite beautiful. Um, and it's a very versatile stock. Uh, I cook a lot of Asian food at home, so it comes in clutch when I'm making all kinds of Asian food, whether it be Japanese or uh, Chinese or Korean or Filipino or what have you. So um, I love making this stock, and it's it's pretty pretty easy to make. So yeah, that's my uh, recipe for an Asian stock. Appreciate you being here. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, do all that stuff. Help me out. Peace. Thank you.